Next up, we have John. Uh, yes, sorry, two Johns. Uh, this thing that looks like something like the three stars from the life of Brian was actually uh, printed and built uh, at the Hacker Dojo uh, Makerspace. John will take like a quick minute to talk, uh, tell what it's about. So I'm trying to uh, come up with a way of basically kind of doing the Unix kernel of hardware. Um, by this, I mean applying uh, software methodologies to, to hardware manufacturing and production. Um, so one of the things I'm looking at is the shop box, like $18,000. I think I could do it with like $500 worth of parts and lumber, uh, screws mostly, and trying to even get it where I'm producing the motors and everything entirely using laser cutting or CNC to the shop box. So it's all digital manufacturing. So um, what I've been working on is a way of taking these roller racks, uh, which are just roller wheels. They sell these uh, made out of steel for about 100 bucks over at Ranger and use them in department stores and, and any kind of manufacturing for moving boxes. And have a gear profile that will mate with this and move back and forth precisely with very low backlash and most importantly, extremely low uh, friction. So there's actually some PhD little papers I've, I've managed to find out of Korea and other places uh, talking about how this actually has uh, extremely low friction and wear. Um, and so if I'm going to try and build something larger than, than a small uh, 3D printer or CNC, this will allow me to do stuff that's on the scale of houses, uh, at minimum, you know, a small uh, machine like this would do a four foot by eight foot piece of plywood, but it should be able to also successfully work on a one foot, one foot square. So that's what I've been working on is, is basically being able to apply that to wood designs to build an all wooden large scale manufacturing. So laser cutting, CNC, water cutting, the whole gamut. How much per square inch can it handle? It really depends on, on how you build it. This was really just a test of the mathematics and the mechanical fittings. Uh, but I can manufacture this uh, at all different things. So the Granger one's capable of 100 pounds per roller. So depending upon how you scale it, you can have a gantry that would be several hundred pounds. So the design actually is quite sound. I mean, even though this kind of looks like a little rickety thing, it's, kind of, it's just the first kind of proof of concept of the idea. And I need a little trolley on it. These actually move really well with no backlash as well, but I need to hold the, um, the height constant, which means you have it in as opposed to rolling like this directly on the gears. So it's actually really interesting. There's a lot of like uh, papers from the 1870s I've been studying on, on wooden gear manufacturing in the early days to go back because if I want to manufacture high precision, high reliability stuff, I would. All of the modern mechanical engineering goes down the toilet because everything's based on, on you know precision, uh, into your profiles, and, and that just doesn't work and work. But 100 pounds per square inch, and that scales up. Easily, yeah. yeah. So I can actually build massive wood construction that would yeah. be very accurate and <laughs> <laughs> so, so and, and the idea is to get rid of the craftsmanship. You just hit a button, print, right. screw it together. So I'm, would you mind just recapping the context of what you're doing? and just going to catch up your practice. OK, so right now, um, like for example, the Shea Buku is uh, like about a thousand dollars. The Shea Buku, Shea Buku. I don't know what that it's is. It's a small scale CNC. So there's a Dremel motor tool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Software is beautiful, right? I mean, I, you know, I, I like doing electronics hardware. I like doing software. The thing is, when I made a piece of hardware, you know, with a hacksaw and the vice, kit cutting, sawing, drilling, if my friend wanted one. I had to start over from scratch, okay? But if I wrote a program in my friend wanted one, I put the floppy in, hit copy, and here you go. And so I've been part of software that has been distributed globally numerous times. I've got stuff in like the clinical kernel. And, um, you know, when I was first even embarking on trying to deal with OS stuff, me and my kids and friends in high school, like 85, people were like, DOS is an OS. Why would you need it anymore? And, like, they couldn't yeah. comprehend multitasking and and this modularity and, and devices looking like file descriptors. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that just streamlined things to the point where the entire world is built on, on this Unix architecture. Hardware is just like DOS. Matter of fact, all the digital manufacturing now, CNCs and stuff, is, nothing's changed since the 60s. You go down to the tech shop, 
They've got an $18,000 machine, which is really like a routing tool on an XYZ positioning gadget. Okay, 18 grand, giant steel rod, precise precisioning, you know, 10th inch spacing grooves, cut with, with you know, precision manufacturing. These are wooden rollers I made in five minutes on the laser cutter. I can do the same weight and accuracy with this, okay? And I can scale it, I can design it, I've got rope uh, software and open SCAD, which is a, a software design CAD to generate what they call conjugate gear profiles. I, I've been learning the mechanical engineering side kind of more than I had previously. Mm -hmm. you know. So are you trying to move heavy objects? Is that what you're trying no, to do? Like place a platform and is, then is, move? Once I have a generic XYZ gantry, so the laser cutter is built on an XYZ gantry, mm -hmm. the 3D printer, the MakerBot, the Shebuku, which is a Dremel motor tool on an XYZ gantry, for like a two foot by two foot square. Um, you know, these are our 10 grand for the laser cutter, the, the shop box 20 grand, the Shebuku is famous Kickstarter because it's a thousand. I want to get the cost of the big things down to the price. Of so then the idea is you'd attach motors to this and it won't be XYZ coordinate to... It would be XYZ and then whatever tool I want to attach. So once I've got the fundamental XYZ, I can attach a laser cutting head. Uh, I can attach additional uh, degrees of freedom for cutting and manufacturing. I can do cutting tools, uh, plasma cutter, water cutters, physical rotating tools, a pen, uh, 3D you know, extruders to do... And you could build large scale things. I think that's what they don't understand. You could build uh, large yeah, scale I things. Basically, I could print a car or a house. With that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, there's a group of myself printing essentially the world's largest building. Yeah, styrofoam. But that's, that's like a tenure out thing. So I've I just got like small beginnings. Like, I just want to go in a straight line precisely <laughs> and cheat it. Um, so this is like taking this massive problem, which is like trying to swallow a whale, and saying, I just want to be able to go in a straight line as cheap as possible with a lot of weight. And how can I do that? So once I've got this down, I can do this at a three quarter inch plywood. And I can scale it up or down accordingly. I can buy these roller racks and steel, or I can produce them quite reliably out of wood. I'm actually astonished at how well this is working. So, um, you know, but again, this is just the beginnings.